Ready for the magic? Go! Now you can draw around it. I don't know how to. Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the back of his teardown lab. We all like pilfering images for colouring in off the internet, but uh, that's fine. I give that to my kids and they colour it in. We've got a book of them. Great. But wouldn't it be nice for them to be able to trace them? And if I hold over a normal piece of paper, I can just about see a fine ghost. As an adult, I could do this, but for kids, nah. So I decided to do something with a bit of equipment I've had lying around for ages and it's hard to fit this in but if you remember I had this mega LED panel and it's the 60 by 60 48 watt LED panel and I thought it might make quite a nice light box so just off camera you can hear me rummaging around that's me unwrapping it because it's a brand new panel with all the brackets and everything but I shan't need to fit it and I was racking my brains to think of what to do with it. I was going to make it a, a sort of light for the back office just so I could illuminate some things just to use it as a kind of a soft box. But it's a, they're very bright lights. Um, and it's not necessarily that easy to mount. But just to show you on the back, you've got this jack. And to that, you connect some power. And I'm trying to see what power you actually need. It's this thing here which is a 30 volts DC, 30 to 48 volts DC at one amp. So it's not too dissimilar than something I've got my bench power supply, which is fortunate because this isn't terminated with a plug, which is gonna be a pro bit of a problem. I don't have my quick test type plug anymore. Don't know where the heck that went to. So I'm just gonna leave that there. And with the end right here, you'll see I'm gonna do a little bit of a naughty, and that's gonna attach my I'm going to try at least to attach these sorts of weird crocodile clips to that. Which way or may not work. So let's just turn that on. This is sort of like the preliminary test. So the bench power supply is on 30, 31 volts. We're going to put the piece of paper over Mario. And you can see there is a fine ghostly outline. So say so they could probably just get on with it as is. But I just want to see what kind of difference it makes really using this thing. Um... So far, it seems absolutely nothing because uh, if, I, if I cocked up the polarity, um, I'm guessing it's center positive, but I could be totally wrong. The weird thing is the bench power supply is just not drawing any, uh, any current whatsoever. Hmm, very peculiar. Right, jump cut while I sort this out. Seems that now's a good time to show you how to wire a plug. I found my box of experimental plugs. So I bought a bunch of plugs a while back and I haven't used them yet. But the difference with these plugs, they've got novelty features. So this plug, for example, has a switch on the back, which I think might be quite cute if I'm gonna give this board, uh, at least it'll be in the vicinity of my children. Um, and the other plug I found has a huge handle on it, like a kind of a grabby handle. So you can put two fingers in, like a mug handle, so you can pop it out. So that could be good if you've got uh, a relative with a, you know, sort of a muscle type issue. But this is a three amp. Oh, 13 amp. Yeah. Mm. We're not going to need 13 amps. Technically, guys, you should be replacing the fuses in things. I have to admit, I'm one of those people who rarely does, and I should too. But yeah, ah. Okay, I'm just a bit ginger here. I'm kind of worried. Did I just break this plug? I broke it a little bit, but it's okay. It's it's kind of fixed again. Um, this is so weird. Look, it's got a neon indicator that's attached by springs to the lid, and that's sort of a floating sort of cam, and the cam's latching onto that. I've never actually been inside one of these before, so if you've got one, though, be a bit more careful than I was, because I could have just busted that. So this is going to be a slightly different than regular plugs in that its terminal arrangement is going to be, I'm guessing, odd to say the least. Uh, I'm seeing earth here, I'm seeing a live here, and a neutral. So that is odd. That's You don't normally see them on the same side, to be fair. 
but that's fine we'll deal with that because normally you have the uh, live right next to the fuse so I'm wondering what's going on between here and here it must have a metal bus bar oh no there's the fuse of course the fuse is in here ah yeah because this switch is taking up the space where the fuse normally goes so there we go so live and neutral that's that's quite a nice though way of you know wiring them where you can just sort of put them straight in like that but not so great in that I guess you have to do a dog leg in your wire. So if you had an earth, you'd probably want quite a long earth wire still. So that's how you do it, guys. If you're wiring a plug, <laughs> a switched plug, do it this way. But be careful, normal plugs don't have this arrangement usually. But all you really need to know is live is the brown wire, neutral is the blue wire, and earth is the green wire. And we'll just have one last look at this just to show you what symbols are pretty common. So we'll just zoom in one last bit here. And you might just be able to see that in the corner right there. You've got an earth and a sort of picture, an earth symbol, which looks like an upside down antenna, like what you see on your mobile phone. And this is the live. There was an L. The L is actually underneath the wire there, so you can't see that. And this is the neutral, and you'll see an N there. So those are the three things you want to look for when you're wiring a plug. Don't miswire them. Now, I've seen devices that have been <laughs> miswired in some crazy-ass ways that still functioned. And I, uh, to this day, some of them, I'm still not entirely sure what went on. So I'll give you an example. I saw a coffee machine once where just everything was crazy wrong. The earth was going to like a neutral and the neutral was going to a live and the live was going to the actual earth. And when you plugged in this coffee machine, you know, because I obviously wasn't aware it was so miswired, the bloody thing would uh, would work. And that was fine. I didn't, I didn't even know there was anything wrong with it, to be honest with you, till I plugged it in at work. And did you know what it did? Not only did it take out the breaker, when I say it took out the breaker, it took it out. It didn't just trip the breaker, it just blew its backside out. And I'm not surprised because it's it's clearly crazy. But the weird thing is in conventional wiring in the house, it didn't uh, cause a problem at all. So that's that. So I'm just gonna plug this in. So yeah, be really wary of that. Sometimes if you see white goods that look a bit dodgily, ah! dodgily wired, I, uh, I'd probably advise you to just sort of open it up and just have a look at what's going at the plug end just to make sure it hasn't been uh, really messed around with. So we've got our switch now, finally. I'm gonna zoom right out so we get the full, full Monty. And he, I've lost my bloody pen. I've lost my tracing pen. Do I, 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 oh, I, I don't know, I really don't know. Anyway, there's our Mario sheet with the ghostly Mario. Now I'm gonna lean over, hit the switch, Ba -ba! Look at that. That's absolutely great. I think that's even worth me walking across to the other side of the back office and actually just getting a new pen. I'm, I'm getting that new pen right now. In fact, I'm searching for one. Not sure if I find one. Yeah, here we go. Now I've found the actual data sheet for the light again. That works really well actually because it's really quite thin. You can put it on your desk. I, I think this would be quite neat as a kind of a desk surface. You could just build, build that in. So let's uh, let's have a go at this Mario with this fountain pen. And it's, it's a bit of a dubious fountain pen because my kids were using it because I found a bit of paper with various scrawls on it. And um, I was pretty sure I didn't make those scrawls. So we're just gonna do the M in Mario's hat. Look at that. Let's, let's, let's zoom in, you can have a look. You can follow me, follow me trace. You can shout at me when I don't do the lines properly. So I never really noticed he's got these sort of sideburns here. He's uh... Ah! No! Okay, there we go. Now I'm unbalanced, I've taken me, uh, me lid off. the best pen. But I'm just noticing his eyebrow seems to go through the uh, line of his uh, hair there, but that's fine. 
because that's a shaded part. Now the reason I'm doing this in real time while I'm leaning over this because I can actually feel it's getting warm. So remember it's a 48 watt panel and we're not sure how much of that energy gets turned into light because nothing's 100% efficient. So some of that LED energy is actually turning into heat that I'm leaning across on. And I've never really uh, tested it with regards to the actual lighting in the back office because it's on the ceiling and frankly who cares. But if you think about it, it does make a big difference if you're uh, in an office complex and you've got thousands of these things because all that heat's going to build up. But I'm guessing it's more efficient than compact fluorescence, otherwise I wouldn't be pushing it. Just around the eyes, let's get his nose, let's go. He's very stylized old Mario, isn't he? If you see uh, pictures of him since you know when he first came out to now, he's definitely changed over the years. I'm not going to do a, a solid shading of his beard, I think, or his moustache rather. I think it'll look a bit more bushy like that. Let's get that going on. Yeah, I think we're on the home straight now. So I'm wondering if I give this to my kids now when would they lose patience in this? I can't see them really bothering to draw. I don't think that they got past his head to be honest with you. It's definitely a lot uh, less fun than just throwing this in the scanner on the printer. So I guess it makes me wonder what else could they trace? You know, what could be the use case for tracing a tracing thing these days? Apart from just maybe trying to pass something off as hand-drawn that you've copied rather than being a direct copy. I think he's got three lines. There we go. It might be nice though I guess if you're trying to trace something and you're trying to do it in a medium that you can't easily do so something like chalk or paint even pencil. Ah oh, my life! It feels like you're handed an exam when you you haven't written for so long. So I think he's he's got kind of a bit of shading here. So I haven't cocked up too much on that. He has. There, whew. That I think is a pretty good facsimile, but uh, we won't know till we do the big reveal. Um, wow, look at that! That's freaky. Double Mario! And you can hear that noise. That is the Mario alarm to tell me that Marios have been created. Every time it beeps, that's what happens. So just my final verdict. Yeah, I'm just feeling the panel. It has LEDs on this far end. I can feel that warm. The, the end nearest me is warm and the other two are quite cool. So. That's how it works. They're not LEDs all round, it seems. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Don't know which one of these it is, but yeah, 48 watt, 60 by 60 panel. You can mount it to your ceiling for daylight effect. There you go. Hope that's inspired you. Get on and make some Marios. As ever. Thank you for watching. Oh, that was awful. One more go. Mario, no Mario, Mario, no Mario, Mario, no Mario, Mario, bye. Before I sign off, I just thought I've got a few of these feet left. Why don't I stick a few in the corners and that'll make it proper. Then the kids won't knock it off the table. But what I am going to do is make sure I get one in the middle because it's a big old panel and it's going to flex under the immense weight of kids standing on it. There you go. Don't buy expensive light boards. Buy reasonably priced light panels. Make your own.